Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Arvind Ganesh, and I graduated from Notre Dame High School in 2007. I'm a neurologist and a clinician scientist uh, with the University of Calgary, meaning that I split my time between clinical practice with patients and my clinical research, which focuses on the prevention and treatment of stroke and dementia. I came to Notre Dame as a new immigrant in the middle of a culture shock in Canada. And when I first came to Red Deer, there were students at school who refused to call me by my name. And I instead endured stereotypical tag names like Abdul because I looked different. And in those days, I often wondered if there was any hope for people like me in our community. But by the time I graduated, I was our school's valedictorian, had helped pass an anti-bullying bylaw in Red Deer through our city's youth voice group, and had left behind an international club in our school to help address misconceptions and prejudice against immigrants and exchange students. While I started off at Notre Dame feeling alone and uncertain about my future, I finished knowing that there was hope for a better, more cooperative, world of friendship and understanding. So how did that transformation come about over those three years at Notre Dame? I am convinced that a huge part of that transformation was the Notre Dame community of staff, not just the teachers, but also the administrators, supervisors, instructors, librarians, all those who came in contact with us during my three years there. In their own unique way, each and every one of them influenced my development, teaching me life lessons, big and small, preparing me for the road ahead. Mr. Dan Flanagan and Ms. Kathy Puto are beloved student counselors who were always there to support and advise me and doubled up uh, as my parents in school during my difficult initial months. Ms. Henley, our career counselor, who strived so hard to ensure that we all found some direction in our lives. She was instrumental in helping me find uh, my first healthcare internship in Red Deer, which helped convince me that medicine is the right career for me. Mr. Madsen and Ms. Lebeda, my English teachers, who taught me so much more than essay writing and poetry analysis in the semesters I spent with them. They empowered me to become a proficient writer, tailoring my writing to my audience and my goals. These are skills that I use every single day in my work as a clinician scientist. Ms. Borley, my math teacher, who with her maternal attitude encouraged me to strive for excellence and was always ready to lend a helping hand along the way. Mr. Molesky, Ms. Mears, Mr. Busby and Ms. McLean, my science teachers who greatly fostered my interest in the sciences and who through their guidance and wisdom gave me the confidence to achieve whatever I dreamed of. And our supervisors, uh, Ms. Leontowicz, Ms. Galen Noring, Mr. Andrews, who were very supportive of my ideas for positive change in the school environment, including creating the International Club. Ms. Atkinson, my social sciences teacher, who motivated me to keep up with my speech and debate skills through university. Mr. Boris, Mr. Ward, and Ms. Andreas, the uh, dons of the school reach team and the student council under whom I was proud to serve. Our phys ed teachers, including the C and the D Henderson brothers, who taught me that the best way to stop a soccer ball is to stand right in front of the ball rather than running away from the menacing guy kicking it. What was also truly fascinating though about our religious education at Notre Dame, thanks to Ms. Arsenal, Mr. Fakely, and Mr. Bouchard, was that we were not told what to believe. Instead, we were asked to discover what we believe. And I think this was really important for students like me trying to forge their, new, their own identity in a new country. And finally, uh, our principal, Mr. Greg Hall, the only man who appeared to have more fun in high school than the students themselves, who always had a smile and a good word for everyone, a contagiously optimistic attitude, and the power to make us all believe that we were capable of greatness. 
The past two pandemic years have shown us that it is only when we come together to protect the vulnerable among us that we have a fighting chance to protect our own health and well-being. At the same time, we have seen Satan in action with Nazi symbols and racist imagery rearing their ugly heads in our nation's capital, with some of our own alumni embarrassing our community by mistaking cruel, irresponsible behavior for personal freedom and making idiotic comparisons of public health restrictions to the horrors of the Holocaust. In such an environment, while trying to cope with the death and disability that we have contended with every single day for the past two years in our hospitals and returning home to our baby boy, my wife and I have felt a return of that old fear and uncertainty that threatened to stifle me nearly two decades ago as a new immigrant. How do we nurture that hope that saved me and countless others. In a world that too often prioritizes self-serving behaviors and arrogance, the pandemic has shown us that the intellectual barriers that we put up to isolate ourselves from the suffering of others are ultimately meaningless because at the end of the day, we are interdependent beyond what we can imagine. So a return to that strong sense of community particularly in these virtual times, is essential to foster a learning environment where young people learn to appreciate and value science, while at the same time learning to value each other and learning to spot misinformation and disinformation that threaten to make fools, ignorant fools, of all our young people. I know we can do this and we must because we owe it to our youth. And I have no doubt that keeping that spirit of community alive will be central uh, to the success of Red Deer Catholic in the years to come. I want to thank you again for giving me the opportunity to talk to all of you. And I wish you well. God bless. Hello, my name is David McTaggart and I graduated from Notre Dame in 2016 and I am from Lacombe, Alberta where I grew up there on a small farm. Since graduating from high school I've attended the University of Saskatchewan where I have completed a Bachelor's of Science in Agriculture with a major in Crop Science and I graduated from that in 2020 and since then I've been working on my Master's in Plant Sciences uh, with a focus on drone imaging and integrating that into how we develop new varieties of crops for our pasture systems here in Western Canada. I've also just recently started working as the Assistant Research Manager for the Northeast Agriculture Research Foundation in Melfort, Saskatchewan. And so yes, I am doing grad studies and working at the same time. Uh, it is definitely a balancing act. But uh, just, that's just a part of who I am that I want to do all of the fun things possible uh, all at once. So that's just the way things go. Now, when I look back at my time at Notre Dame, I have many fond memories. And when it comes to my academics, I always think that my time there helped to challenge me to try new things and to meet my desire to always improve. I think back to times, for example, of being in Mr. Madsen's English 30 class. When I started in this course, essays really weren't my thing. And after the first one that came through, I definitely realized that I wanted to improve. And he helped to channel my enthusiasm and ability to generate new ideas into something that was uh, concrete and made sense to a reader beyond myself and helped me to improve throughout my time in that class. Another academic experience I look back very fondly is uh, my time in Madame Escobar's classes in French immersion through the science and math streams. She taught me to embrace my love of learning and knowledge 
while not all also being afraid to challenge me those times when she knew that I could do better. And I always, I always appreciated that. I also learned during my time at Notre Dame that academics aren't just something to serve your own personal achievements, but it's a gift to share with others as well. I remember administration staff encouraging me to be a tutor, to help others achieve their academic goals, whatever form that those took. And I channeled those to my time in university of being a, a leader for our learning communities for first year university students and also helping my fellow students through our various classes. When it comes to my spiritual experience at Notre Dame, it sowed the seeds to help me to start to understand that a Catholic faith goes beyond so much more than just simply going to church. It connects to everything that we do in our lifestyle. And I think back to my time in student council with Mrs. Nivens, Mrs. Henley, and Mrs. Smith, of understanding how our faith can be channeled into acts of service and also to open our hearts to the needs of others. I know that definitely I can be a little bit bullheaded sometimes in pushing some of my ideas forward and my time in student council helped me to start to learn to, to listen to others more and to try and understand their feelings. I keep those lessons with me even to this day when working with others. I also got some of my first encounters with what brotherhood could look like through my time on the junior men's volleyball team under the watchful eye of Mr. Mike McAdam, Mr. Darren Dornstodder, and Pistol Pete as well. And these were through many of our times of going to tournaments. I learned of what good fun could be had with men my own age, but also how we could hold ourselves accountable. And again, just valuable lessons that I continue to use in my day-to-day -to -day life today. So in closing, I just want to say thank you. In transferring from Lacombe to Notre Dame in grade 10, I'd experienced quite a bit of bullying in our school in junior high. And that was discouraging for many people in trying to be themselves and just honestly be themselves and to be proud of that. But I found during my time at Notre Dame, I could be who I was, and there was ways that I could channel that uh, to make me feel good, but then also to contribute to a healthy community. And so for that, I say thank you, and that I'm really grateful for all those experiences that my time at Notre Dame offered me. I hope you all enjoy Faith Day, and I look forward to being in touch with some of you all in the future. Take good care. everyone. My name is Laura McTaggart. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm really excited to be here today to share with you on Faith Day. I am currently located on the Musqueam Indian Reservation in what is now Greater Vancouver. I'm here completing my Master's in Indigenous Community Planning at UBC. And I also play for the women's volleyball team here. I graduated from Notre Dame in my, and it was in 2013, uh, the graduating class um, from French Immersion. And I look back on my time at Notre Dame really fondly, and it was a really key point in my life. And I'm always so grateful to the teachers and to the school that really helped shape me and helped me get to where I am now. Um, I moved from Lacombe to Red Deer Schools in 2010. I had previously been attending Lacombe Junior High, but chose to attend Notre Dame for high school for the really great volleyball program and also for the French Immersion. And it turns out there was so much more to offer as well. The, the extra programs and activities at the school and being at a Catholic school really helped me at a time with, that can be really challenging for youth. And you can be trying to figure out who you are as a person and having that opportunity to learn and grow in a Catholic school was really important for me and my, my growth into becoming an adult. So a bit about myself and where I've been. 
Um, after graduating, I moved to Vancouver in 2013 and started my undergraduate degree in Global Resource Systems, which is a focus in environment and sustainability. <clears throat> I, um, I did my degree in five years while on the volleyball team and it was really interesting and special to be in Vancouver and learning about environment in a different province, in a different city, and around big thinkers. And I was really inspired. I had some really awesome summer jobs between uh, years at school. For the first two years, I worked for Todd Nivens at the Carrywood Nature Center as a bilingual parks interpreter. After that, I worked for Pacific Agri-Food Canada as an agriculture researcher. And then for the next two summers, I worked as a park ranger in Northern Alberta. After graduating, I moved to Edmonton and worked for the Alberta Native Friendship Centers Association, doing green initiative projects with indigenous communities around the province. And in 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, I decided to go back to school to do my master's in Indigenous community planning. I still had a few years of volleyball eligibility left, so I moved back to Vancouver with my cat and returned to the women's volleyball team and began my master's in Indigenous planning. At the moment, I am completing my practicum with Hamalco First Nation, which is up by Campbell River on Vancouver Island and I'm getting ready for volleyball playoffs. If things go well, we'll be heading to nationals in Calgary in March, which I'm really excited for. When I look back on my time at Notre Dame, there's a few memories and a few people who stick out in my mind and I wanna take this moment to make a few shout outs. Um, at the time, we had Mr. Hall as our principal and he was just such a light and a spirit at the school. And I always walked in those front doors and he was there with a smile, welcoming the students in for the morning. And I was always so grateful for that. For most of my time at Dame, I was coached on the volleyball team by Chris Wandler. And uh, he was supported by Mrs. Best. And this was so much fun and I really had such a good experience with them as our coaches. I had come from Lacombe, a smaller town, and made this what felt like at the time a big jump to Red Deer, new people in a new school, and they really made me feel like I could shine and they helped me to grow as an athlete and also as a person. <clears throat> I also had such a wonderful experience with the French Immersion Program at Notre Dame. I wanted to make a special shout out to Monsieur Richet, who I know is now retired, um, and also Madame Escobar, who was also a teacher for my younger brother, David McTaggart, who joined the school right after I graduated. And both of these teachers really demanded the best from their students and asked us to go above and beyond. and. I really enjoyed coming back for visits to Red Deer to see them and see how they were doing. I also was involved with student council and also just sought extra supports from our support staff. And I wanted to shout out Mrs. Henley and Mrs. Nivens, who really helped me to think about how I could be a leader at the school and in the community. And I think student council was really valuable experience for that. And also I know Mrs. Henley gave me a lot of support in looking at life after high school and helped me to look at UBC. I believe she even went to UBC. And um, so I remember us having a lot of really good conversations about life in Vancouver. And that was really, really neat and personal. So I remember that fondly. Um, finally, I also had such a wonderful time with Jen Morrison, who I know is no longer at Notre Dame, um, but at the time we co-founded Sphere Environmental Club, which was the first time, at least in a while, that Notre Dame had had 
a sustainability or environmental club at the school. And we were able to go to a conference in Kananaskis to learn about water literacy. And I remember this being a really pivotal time for me that, sh that really motivated me to think about a career in sustainability. And if it weren't for this, I don't know where I would have ended up for school or what I would have ended up doing. And this was such an important experience. I'm really grateful for her leadership and the openness of the school for us to start some, some projects. As I close, I really want to emphasize how special it was to be at a Catholic school. I continued in my faith once I moved to Vancouver and university. Um, I joined our church choir at St. Mark's Catholic Parish at UBC and would go every Sunday, sing music and make community. And in, in growing up as a young adult, being able to find community in new places is so valuable if you share a faith. And I've found that no matter where I move to or where I go, I'm able to rejoin a faith community and be able to find people like me. And I'm really grateful for that. And so I don't know if it weren't for my time at Dame at that critical point in high school when you're really thinking about who you're gonna be as a person, if there wasn't that opportunity to be connected to church and to faith and religion in class, I'm not sure if I would have continued on that path into young adulthood. So thank you everyone for all that, uh, that you've given to me as a student of Notre Dame and as a faith community. And thank you for listening and I hope you have a great celebration today. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gina Omelon. For those who don't know me, I am an actress. I live in Los Angeles and work by coastal between LA and New York. And I am a Red Deer Catholic uh, product. So I went to Maryview, St. Thomas, and Notre Dame. Thanks for having me and thanks for asking me to be here. I, um, I was asked to share how Red Deer Catholic affected my vocation and life. And it really got me thinking about my K-12 schooling. And I realized I don't remember a lot of it because it was over a decade ago. Um, so <laughs> I really went down through memory lane and what hit me is that I really remember how teachers made me feel and how they treated me. So I want to go over uh, three really quick stories first. Um, I was told to give a shout out to teachers if I wanted to, um, so I'm going to. My first story, it's been over 14 years since this one, so I'm pretty sure this teacher can't get in trouble for this anymore. Uh, Mr. Tukesher, <laughs> you get the first story. So Mr. Tukesher is my ninth grade teacher at grade nine. Ninth grade is very American. I've lived here for 10 years now. I, I, I speak like them, whoops. Um, so he's my grade nine teacher and he scheduled a test on my birthday. And for those who don't know me, I was very academic in school. I wanted to win every award, beat every record. I took it very seriously. So I would have had to spend my last night of being 14 um, studying, and I would have studied for like four to five hours, absolutely. So I said, can I take it the day before so I can just enjoy my birthday? And he actually said, yes. Uh, I remember that story. I don't remember what that test was about. I don't even know what ninth grade science was about. I just remember we went to the zoo. So that's a story of how I remember how he made me feel. And I got to enjoy my birthday. And I did really good on that test and he cared enough about my goal and let me do it. So A, I still remember that Mr. Tukesher. B, thank you still. Uh, another story is Mr. Knievel. He no, no longer works for the division, but this is one of my favorite memories from high school. I had 99.4% in his class, 0.1% more, and it would have just rounded to 100. So I went to him asking, hey, can I do extra credit? Most teachers, if I would have said this, they would have been like, no, you're doing fine. It's good enough. It wasn't good enough for me, though. That was what my goal was. And instead of giving me that speech, he said, sure, 
I'll give you some extra credit. What I ended up doing was making a six foot poster of Michael Jackson explaining the water cycle in every format of how he would use it during his concerts. So I did, I made this six foot poster and to be honest, I don't remember if he kept it or if I did and it had sparkles everywhere. That was really fun and it bumped my grade up 0.1%. That's a memory that I remember. I actually even remember what it was about because it was so much fun. And also he listened to me and cared about my goals. He didn't just tell me I was doing good enough. Third, literally anything and everything Mrs. Kokolikio ever did. Uh, she supported me probably more than anyone in my career. And anyone who ever walked through Notre Dame's door saying they wanted to pursue the arts as a career. Um, thanks for believing in me and not just being like, oh, it's a pipe dream. Maybe you can, you know, do community theater. When I said I want to be an actress in sitcoms in Hollywood, you were like, okay, then go do it. Uh, so thank you for believing me. Thanks for being a place where all of us artists who are usually looked at weirdly in high school could go and have a safe place and have a real conversation about what we wanted to do and just be told yes and go do it and not, well, will you be able to make money? Maybe you should do this. Thank you. She also wrote me a letter before I left school, so if I ever had a day in Hollywood where I wasn't believing in myself or going down any path like that that Hollywood's so often known for, I could open it up. And to this day I have it because I want to save that for the day when I'll need it, but I still carry it with me. So thank you, Miss Warder, who, that's how I knew her. Then she got married! So I have to think about it so hard when I say Mrs. Kokolikio. <laughs> I got asked to say a shout out to any other teachers, so I'm just gonna go through some that really stand out in my heart. And um, if I miss anyone, I'm really sorry. But I also wanna say a big thank you to uh, Mr. Lansing, Mr. Flanagan, uh, Ms. Pudo, Mr. Kane, Mr. Kelly, Miss Almeida, who's now Mrs. Teb. All of you guys impacted my schooling so much. Mr. Flanagan found the school I went to. Um, it wasn't really on my radar, and I was like hemming and hawing about it. And he really went and he got me a brochure and everything and brought it back from a trip to California. So thank you. I think I just want to close out on students aren't going to remember what that you teach them. They're just not. We go into different paths and we don't need a lot of the stuff we learn anymore. But we're going to remember how you taught us. And we can't forget that Red Deer Catholic is a Catholic school division. So where's Jesus in this? You look at the Bible and you look at scripture, most of the time Jesus was doing stuff for people and that's how we realize how he treats people. He wasn't just telling us and then walking away. So students are gonna remember how you treat them. They're gonna remember whether you push away their goals and go, eh, you're fine, you're doing fine, I have other people that are struggling. No matter the struggle of the le level of 0.1% or 50%, both is valid and both of those students' feelings matter. I'm so thankful for all the teachers who believed in me because now I can do that on set for people. If they need extensions, if they want to do something early, they just need to have a laugh. If they want to be treated kindly and like equal, I'm really glad that I had teachers who showed that for me at Red Deer Catholic and showed me what it's like to be like Jesus by just doing it. Thank you to all of you and I hope you're doing good and being safe in the pandemic. Um, thanks so much. Hey, awesome people. Uh, my name is Roger Rivera, and I graduated in 2012, and I am now a grade three French immersion teacher at a call Our Lady of the Rosary School in Sylvan Lake. When Leanne, AKA Madame Arsenal, uh, to me, asked me to make the video explaining uh, my education that I've got at Red Deer Catholic Schools and how it's helped me form uh, me into the person I am today, I was thrilled. I thought this was a perfect opportunity to thank all the teachers and staff that have impacted my life. And I try to think about what makes our, uh, RDCRS teachers and staff so special. And I couldn't really identify just one trait. Now that got me thinking that the true beauty of the teachers and the staff is that they're all unique. There are a few teachers, and this by no means is a compre as comprehensive as uh, I have a lot of people to thank. Uh, so I started off learning at Camille J. LaRouge and I was a blessed 
to have an amazing grade one teacher uh, named Madame Lalonde. Uh, I remember her as being caring, kind, and every day she welcomed us to school with a big smile and I knew and I felt that I was self, uh, safe in her care. Um, in grade one, I know it was pretty scary for me as uh, school was a new thing. And, um, and I, at that time, my, my parents were both immigrants, so they didn't know very much English. And so me coming to school was, uh, was a little bit scary as my vocabulary wasn't as developed as everybody else's. But I was in French immersion, so we, all, we were all in the same, uh, uh, same situation there. Uh, as I passed through elementary and into middle school, I remember one teacher that played a big role in my life, and uh, that was Mr. Cormier. So Mr. Cormier um, was, was amazing, and every day in Mr. Cormier's class was a good day. Uh, his kind but firm guidance and teaching helped me uh, develop into the person I am today. And I know that he ha we had a lot of good laughs and a, and a lot of learning in his class and in the shop as well. I loved his shop. He was always uh, so uh, trustful with us. He taught us how to use those dangerous machines and trusted that, you know, we would do our best and we would make sure that we were safe. And he made sure that we were safe as well. So uh, thank you, Mr. C. I appreciate you. Uh, in middle school, I was quite the chatterbox, and on top of that, I had a lot of energy. And that energy sometimes led to bad choices. I'll spare you the details, uh, but if you want to ask Mr. McLeod, uh, you can. Uh, now, that's kind of how I got had the pleasure of meeting Mr. McLeod. Um, Mr. McLeod and I, or Mr. McLeod had never seen me in his office, and I'd never gone to his office before, and so I believe he gave me a little bit of grace. Um, when he made me reflect on the things I had done. And uh, afterwards, he had a conversation with me uh, to truly understand the reasoning behind my actions. Uh, this impacted me greatly, as I had always thought of principals of the school to be a little too harsh on people, uh, as we all make mistakes and we could use a little grace. Uh, and that day, Mr. McLeod earned my respect, and I, from that day forward, never wanted to let him down again, as I could see that what he wanted was just the best for me. Uh, so that's that's it for uh, elementary. Now in middle school, um, I don't remember it very well to be honest, uh, as those awkward years are some that I would like to forget. Um, some regretful hairstyles uh, and uh, not so good choices. Uh, but I do remember the impact that uh, Madame Pottage, formerly known to me as uh, Madame Ganger had, um, in those days. Now, our class was very small and we were very chatty, uh, but Madame Ganger always made sure that we did our best and kept us accountable in her classroom. Uh, she was a beginning teacher at the time, and so we all did a bit of learning that year, uh, a lot like my first years in teaching. So thank you, Madame Pottage, and, uh, and you're, you're not forgotten. Uh, I remember the days and you know with all those kids in that small little class and and I can't help but think of all the good times we've had in there. Uh, <clears throat> so as I moved on to high school uh, at Notre Dame, uh, I learned a lot about myself, and I think I really found out who I was during those years. The work of all the teachers that I had throughout the years was finally paying off as I really started to take my education more seriously. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I was known to uh, finish my work a little too quick, um, as, uh, as it was a little too easy sometimes. And uh, like I said, I was a bit of a chatterbox. So, um, But my first encounter with a difficult class um, was actually Madame Escobar's uh, Math 20-1 uh, class. Now, for anyone that knows Madame Escobar, she will tell you herself that her courses are hard because she's trying to get us ready for real life. And boy, was she right. Uh, the beauty of Madame Escobar was that although her courses were hard, she did everything she could for you to make it through her class. I remember the great memories I have working with Madame Escobar during lunch hours, uh, when I needed an extra boost, and uh, she makes sure that her students work hard and she works even harder. So thank you, Madame Escobar. 
Uh, I remember vividly her opening her classroom during lunch hours so that we could chat and hang out. And I remember uh, my group of friends and I, we would hang out in Madame Escobar's class. And those were great memories. So thank you, Madame Escobar. Uh, now, the last teacher I'd like to thank goes by the name of Madame Arsenault, um, or you might know her as uh, Leanne. Uh, she taught me religion in high school. Now, I need to explain a little backstory. My parents are practicing Catholics, and so Catholicism was the obvious choice for me. Uh, but during my high school years, I really questioned my faith, and I was trying to find out what this world was really about. Uh, let's call it a time of discovery. Uh, with that being said, I always like to listen to both sides of the story, and on this particular day in class, there was a student that was obviously opposed to the Catholic faith and uh, was questioning in a very accusatory manner um, uh, Madame Escobar, or not Madame Escobar, Ma uh, Madame Arsenault, uh, in regards to our faith. Now, I remember this vividly because I remember thinking, how could someone whose faith is so strong let someone talk so negatively about their faith and beliefs? <clears throat> I later learned through my own encounters with people like that, that the best way to deal with someone who disagrees is to treat them with kindness and respect, even when they're not reciprocating it. Now, this was a lesson I'll never forget, as I now, I now teach about the faith. And every time I want to let my emotions take control, I remember how Madame Arsenault handled it. Thank you, Madame Arsenault. Uh, as a final observation, I would say that what makes the staff of Red Deer Catholic School so special is that every one of them is unique and beautiful in their own way. And that, as a result, is bound to reach every kind of student. Now, a little thing I like to say is, uh, is that it takes all kinds of people to teach all kinds of people. So I just want to thank everybody who played a role uh, in Red Deer Catholic Schools, uh, in my life, and none of you, I haven't forgotten any of you. Uh, these were just a few of the people that I remember vividly and uh, had the most impact in my life. But every little part that I lived uh, made me into the person I am today. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, and uh, I appreciate you all.